tupatie insights za industry this guy this guy akona akona story mob sana ya kutishow mr brayo in the house kwenye airpods pale love it santi karibu sana oi i am good how are you bana Okay, ni mocha leo sha na dakika tatu pole. Na dakika tatu tunaelewa you know maandamano is happening. Uh-huh. Yeah, quite understandable. Karibu sana bwana. Eh hey, it's been so long bwana. Hapa watu kwa no, kupata, no. wakupate wapi? Hapa hapa. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, thank man. you so much. Thanks so much for showing up bwana. Ah, yeah, oh, yeah, really man. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having yeah, me. Dan Yeah 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 brand is a, is a legend in this industry. Ah, Kweli. <laughs> eh, a seasoned veteran as I'd like uh, to say. And I'm humbled and really humbled. Mm-hmm. Okay, asante asante asante. Karibu sana bwana. Uh, so we can go straight to the point and uh start off and uh, you can tell us uh I don't know whether it's a brief history but just tell us history about Brian how brand started playing drums and you just your musical journey mm. <laughs> okay that's 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 a uh, that's a pretty pretty long one but uh mm-hmm. i'm going i'm going to try and sum it up all right uh, uh so first of all i just want to to shout out my mom <laughs> she's <laughs> she's in the bundes she's not she's not able to mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> Mommy, 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 man. Uh, mothers are like the best things, man. Those are angels yes. uh, in disguise. Uh, so um, it all started in primary school. I went mm-hmm. to to St. Michael's. Uh, this is in Eastlands, Mari. I say so. I say a number of shara. I say wa 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 jiri. I say wa buru. That's where it all started. So. Um, like from from a, from a very tender age uh so we had a school band uh which uh when you got to uh should i say class 4 back then mm-hmm. uh, to a 844 <laughs> that your class for nigani so they start to pretty much groom anyone who's interested in wanting to learn the instruments so me considering I was in the same primary school from pre unit all the way to doing my KCP exams uh I was you know we got used to listening to the national anthem being played the school anthems the you know pambios that you normally used to have mm-hmm. the entire band play and then we used to be sponsored sponsored by Colgate back then so we had we had like a fully blown out marching band and that was like we were the cream and the cream of primary schools in East London Sinner got men up. Now when could party as the year so when this was happening ama ah uh, kwa kwa miaka sana. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, somewhere between somewhere between let me say uh, 2000 and 2004. Those are in between mm-hmm. those four years is when I was pretty much uh, into it. when i joined uh, the school band mm-hmm. and something about me is uh, when i pick up a, med- a melody it sticks with me mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and uh, since uh, imagine having to listen to something for for more than 5 6 years before you actually have to play it so it comes to you so naturally mm-hmm. so by the time i was being picked up to join the school band I was the one who was actually telling guys you playing the wrong note and at that point ah. man, I'm like in class 4 class 5 around there so <laughs> shako mb maze ni shako mb muda so by the time I was getting to class 6 I mm-hmm. was bumped up to become the band leader mm-hmm. and at this time I'm leading guys who are like two classes on top of me is class 7 class 8 mm-hmm. so it it is to be it is to be quite intense before I picked it up and you know mm-hmm. um I was able to at least you know become who I am and then uh I was in the choir as well which is so, uh, another just thing. take you back so Sorry. when when you were playing in the band were you playing drums or you playing everything horns which... everything oh, okay. I could I could swap so first uh, first I started with the recorder mm-hmm. 
and uh, I was, you know, teaching girls how to play the anthems, the ones that, you know, the previous students used to play. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and then uh, my main instrument was the side drum. Yeah, the mm -hmm. marching drum. And then now you have yeah. the big drum. So everybody had their own individual uh, yes. equipment. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like one fully blown out kit. So mm -hmm. we just had to, you know, pick one, select which one works for you. But me used to, you know, since I'm the boss at that point, I used to decide that. Leo, Leo, and Nacheza Shika. Najiskia Kucheza. Najiskia too, I just feel like shaking a shaker, man. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I was, I was, I was, I was all of us alternating, uh, depending on where I feel like, you know, today I, I want to fit into this or something of the sort. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, Jenny, I'm for so long, bro. Ah. You know, well, let me just tell you one thing about musicians in general. We uh -huh. lie to each other when we see each other. <laughs> this is this is Kenyan musicians. You know, we we act as if you're best friends when we meet up. I... <laughs> yeah, we want to hug each other. We want to show up. Hey, man, it's been a minute. It's not like you don't have my number. You can just give me a holla. It's not like, hey, you can just request for you know let's link up and talk are you available to yeah, yeah yeah for sure i'd like some advice i don't know why people never go through that but mm -hmm. when people bump into each other at shows at gigs is when they act like yo it's been a minute man <laughs> what uh hey, it's been my pote you know people yeah, me. <laughs> i don't know that. and uh, this is the same thing that you're telling me right now me i'll just burn you straight up <laughs> <laughs> out, out of a clear heart, hey, I'll leave you the dignity, but I'll just bury you like, hey, we, we know each other from way back. I've yeah. seen you come up and uh, uh, we've, 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 we've just been able to interact uh, through different uh, situations, musically, non-musical. Yeah. Uh, and I feel, I, I remember, I think the one time me and you actually got to sit down was when I think you just swallowed your pride and you decided you want to learn something from me and you asked me, hey, can I link up with you? Uh, you show me how to to make tracks, playback tracks on uh, the IMPC. And I was like, okay, <laughs> great. We met up, we sat down. And yeah. uh, hey, we, I, I believe that was pretty much it. And then that was the start of, that's pretty much a long musical journey that uh, we, we are still we're still in and hey we are just grateful and thankful to god for the gift but man thank you so much wow yeah, i bro. swallowed my pride <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see that one coming but uh, right. just to, to to go on from uh what what you had said about school so mm -hmm. how how do you now get into like the music circle after like after school after primary school so did you play in high school? Uh, how, how did it look like for you? Not even high school. High school, I didn't. Uh, high school is another different story. So let me uh -huh. let me tell you. This is uh, I'm in class seven, and mm -hmm. uh, between between class five and class seven, my mom had already tagged me into the church choir. This is now mm -hmm. my home church. Mm -hmm. We are shouted Saint Philip's. This is mm -hmm. my home church. I really love it. Saint uh, Philip's Jericho. Uh, Jericho, yeah, that's where it all started. That's where so many musicians have been groomed. Uh, if you if you ask around, if you know the stuff, you'll know most of the best musicians have come from there. So at that time, we didn't have a drum set. We just had mm -hmm. a keyboard, um, Casio keyboard. If you guys had a Casio keyboard, man, <laughs> you've seen it all. Uh, and uh, and uh, like percussions, congas, which mm -hmm. are pretty much used by the choir. So. Uh, during that time, I joined the choir because my mom was like, you know, my, my son plays the drums in primary school. So I don't mm -hmm. know what mindset is it that parents have. If you play the drums in school, that means you can be able to, you know, be able to just put your whatever on the congas and translate whatever you play in school, play it in the choir. Just apply it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just respectful to my mom, man. Every other time I come to school at five, you just find your mm -hmm. mom waiting for you over there, dress up. You're going to church practice for choir practice. Mm -hmm. So that's where it all started, uh, uh, and then I built from there. The church didn't have drums, so uh, at some point there was an arambe. Kanisa is going to marambe but you know mm -hmm. my church is that straightforward. So they bought they bought the first kit. It was very intimidating. Uh, mm -hmm. You can which, you can which tell kit you know it was a Yamaha. Mm -hmm. It was a Yamaha. Those you know those uh, like uh, display Yamahas that people abroad won't buy or people just buy to. <laughs> how the kids play with. So uh, they bought a Yamaha, very orange Yamaha. Uh, uh -huh. And I remember I used, to, I used to attend a lot of crusades 
back then because uh, you know uh, Pius Muru and uh, Margaret Wanjiro used to hold a lot of crusades in Jericho mm -hmm. so that used to be a spot where now we actually get to see a full band play and it was mm -hmm. Seb I don't know which crew guys that I don't even get to see nowadays but these are the guys mm -hmm. that pretty much inspired us mm -hmm. to get into this industry uh, straight mm -hmm. up because we're like hey, these kids man this is going to be expensive when are we going to get one so I church bought one and mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 we were not allowed to touch it only one guy was allowed to touch it <laughs> uh, Toto Kando. Uh, Toto Kando. Uh, so I don't know me I just say I had favor I had favor that's all I can mm -hmm. say because uh, as soon as the kit was bought I, I developed interest Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to come to church from the first service in the morning, which started at 7 a.m., mm -hmm. and just stand on the window where they had set up the kit, where the girl was playing, the kit was playing. So stand mm -hmm. outside the church, but on the window where the kit is, mm -hmm. to just watch, because I'm that interested in, like, how is this guy, you know, able to play all this stuff? Yeah. His foot is moving, the hi hats, you know. Mm -hmm. He's just maneuvering. He wasn't that good, but he was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but back then, like that's that's like what you've seen, and that's like wow. That's God. wow. Yeah, that's wow. <laughs> this is yeah. like he's telling it everybody. So um, and everything I used to listen to, I used to stay mm -hmm. in church from seven a.m. until the mm -hmm. last service, which used to end at around two p.m. Mm -hmm. And then they used to set all the equip equipments down, put them back mm -hmm. in the vestry, which is like a storage room on the side. Mm -hmm. So that's where I just, you know, decided to ask for permission because I wanted to advance and learn in this. So I just talked to the guy who was like the caretaker in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he allowed me, I told him I need, I need to learn. And he allowed me to be setting up after church and, you know, just playing. I told him I don't know anything, but I'm going to learn. So everything I used to listen to, if anything sounds interesting to my ears, mm -hmm. any, like I'll interpret it. So I used to just set up, learn how to set up from scratch. Mm -hmm. didn't you know ask anybody hey come and teach me how to do this because people just used to disappear after church so you on your own mm -hmm. so um i picked up uh the whatever kanisa ilikuwa na sticks but the church is not going to stick to house you know na kama nasema hii church mko na sticks ama drama za kujua hiyo sticks yeah so much but not as many i think i'd like to assume unless the people in the comment section can tell us I don't know, man. Those even in Makanisa, Zilas are uko deep within. But uh, yeah. Yeah. our churches used to have uh, a drumstick kit. Ama kunile ilko na kujana kit. But ilko na fichua alafu kianza kushed. They tape it all over, man. It's just taped from the tip to kunyuma. So when you're playing the thing, you know, you get sweaty. Your palms mm -hmm. are. You, you, you don't have a proper grip on it. Yeah. But don't pay attention to it. I'm just like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to learn. So at that time, mm -hmm. that didn't matter so much. I'm pretty much just mm -hmm. doing reference compared to my current place to where I was back then. Right. So, so I started learning stuff. It was like, you know, just getting the coordination and all that. I was like, most of the things that really interest me was playing worship music. Oh. Yeah. Leave mm -hmm. everything else aside. Worship music. Just kick high hat snare kick hi hats now you get uh huh kick kick <laughs> kick that's the old school way of people doing stuff it's your kick mm -hmm. double double snare hi hat hi hats continues on a 4 4 kick on the mm -hmm. floor below and that's what i just started to learn and believe it or not that gave me my coordination in a way that in like i think two months down the line i was able to move everywhere with mm -hmm. uh with a level of independence that personally i couldn't interpret uh -huh. but okay. just having to you know doing something over and over and over yeah the not an insanity kind of thing but mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way that i'm really trying to get this thing to lock this thing down properly so mm -hmm. um that happened and uh, i picked up a lot of that and uh, I transitioned now to play the faster music. Uh, I don't know what happened to Kenya. I don't know who introduced Seben to Kenyans, but I feel like it's a curse. I'll forever tell people Seben is a curse. 
What was the We got you guys. No, no offense. I just let me to let you guys know that seven is not everything. I, I, it's a beautiful music. Believe it or not, my digs, my mom, and my pops mm -hmm. instilled seven in our systems from uh -huh. the inception. Talk to Zaliwe. Because our digs used to be Roomba 24-7. Used to mm -hmm. be a kina kofi, a kina madilu, a kina pupa wemba. Mm -hmm. You name them. You know, a kina kandamboguma. All those guys, the, mm -hmm. the legends. So those are the kind of things that we used to listen to. Unless in the Sunday asubui prior to church, going to church, is when yep. we're going to play some hymns. Uh -huh. We used to have a cassette. Those are the days for cassettes. Mm -hmm. We used mm -hmm. to have a cassette for Golden Bells. Those songs still play in my head until now. I've tried to look for those songs. Mm -hmm. I'm unable to find them. Anywhere. What? Anywhere. Crazy. So, uh -huh. so me, that has been in my system. And uh, when it came to now actually transitioning to that bit, mm -hmm. I, had, I had a ton of ideas in my head on how to play uh -huh. seven because I'd already listened to different uh, rudiments or just you know types of seven you know the way mm -hmm. it's faster the way the transition there's a way you roll when you call who or who mm -hmm. so by the time it got to a point where i have to play it it just came out so easily mm -hmm. like i was so i was really because this was able to this was in you subconsciously right like yeah, it's, this is way before you started playing like so totally i didn't even but, personally I can tell you i didn't take time i didn't take time to actually learn those things Mm -hmm. at all once i understood mm -hmm. that if i do this this is how it sounds mm -hmm. i can be able to sit on a kit and mm -hmm. know where to start to get that oh. sound mm -hmm. that's how i built my sound i can say i never invested so much in learning how to play the color music or mm -hmm. just playing soccer playing zook playing what it came pretty much easy so anything else that i learned from that is as a result of you're being sent for songs listen to this song this is the song that you're going to be playing this weekend that time we didn't even have it, whatever something that you can access music with online negative we used to mm -hmm. meet on saturdays early mm -hmm. and sit down with the entire team people listen to songs try apart listen to and we start again okay particularly we sing and and all that so it mm -hmm. took longer uh in right. terms of preparation and rehearsal and all that stuff uh mm -hmm. but hey our technology <laughs> yeah, now you're at a much better place. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. we're able to fasten the process of pretty much doing all the stuff. So um, I believe that is the one thing I, I, I even tell everyone every day, work on your foundation, understand your equipment. I mm -hmm. tell everybody, man, I learn you, just understand it to a point where if I tell you, uh, boss, you have 10 minutes to play this song, listen mm -hmm. to it. In 10 minutes, I just want you to play. It's not a hard song, it's just a song where you can tell where the song is going. Mm -hmm. and you can be able to interpret it on your instrument yeah okay so mm -hmm. um that is what worked for me and i felt like, like i took a shortcut mm -hmm. which i wasn't aware of and it, it worked <laughs> out for me i was able to save a lot of time mm -hmm. on having been able to listen to a lot of material growing up which mm -hmm. uh, came back subconsciously as you mentioned and i was mm -hmm. able to interpret it when I'm playing other people's music, and mm -hmm. yeah, I guess that's, ah, that's very interesting. Hey, yeah, man. Buddha, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's man. it's amazing how this music thing works because sometimes the, the things that you didn't, when like even for me, the yeah. things that I didn't consciously know about, like from the record that my, that my parents would play, mm -hmm. sometimes are very easily for, for me, it's very easy to interpret them because it's like. And you're you're asking yourself questions like, is J struggle? Could you have a coming and an up and the tutorials? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> down this song. Say, this is how play. I hear this song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, CG vast group, chorus, CG, yes, G, and you're just like, come on, man. But uh with that being said, I think I want to fast forward your journey, Kidogo. Mm -hmm. Uh tell me about your first gig and how you got to land your first gig. Uh uh, form three. Oh. Uh, I was 17. Same as a funny as album, Jimmy, not So, uh, I think it was 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and uh, it was like a Saturday, Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, evening rather. We were coming mm -hmm. from a rehearsal, St. Felix as well, with the worship team. Mm -hmm. We used to fin finish our rehearsals at around 6, 6.30. Mm -hmm. And I used to have a very beat up phone, like mm -hmm. a very beat up phone. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys remember those Alcatels that used to have an oval screen and you look at Alcatels, G pop, pink, come on, red, some some weird color. Okay, so. What was the name of the Oh, man. Uh, so, from three, of a Jericho Pale. I say, OJ, shout out. <laughs> so, um, uh, it was a Saturday. Just coming off here, so uh, with the boys, with the, with the worship team, and normally, if not, we can get to story to conduct after more to Chipale Jerry. Uh, so a, fo a phone call came through, mm -hmm. and uh, do, do you have have you, have you ever heard this thing where it's 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 like you have someone's number on your phone, but you've never met them, it's just that you admire them so much, to uh -huh. the point where you don't know how you got their number, but you have their number, right? So in a congatu mali you may work at two. And because I wasn't even sure if uh -huh. that, that was the number of that guy. I just saved the number and I put the name over there. Mm -hmm. So um uh random evening, you're leaving church, the phone call comes through. I pick up the phone call. Kizungango ilikuwa chini. I was like, guys. <laughs> oh man, I will never forget this. Uh -huh. if you get to see this you can attest that uh, i wasn't even able to respond to you because first of all i was very shocked mm -hmm. and i didn't know how to respond in english properly so i kept on saying yes man yeah man you know <laughs> yeah man the ghetto bro uh -huh. <laughs> So Aaron calls me, hey, um, is this Brio? Yeah, man. Yeah. Mm, Brio. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to paraphrase uh, if I can remember all the things that I said. Uh -huh. So it's like, uh, I got your number and I wanted you to come and uh, play a gig with me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow being a Sunday. Mm -hmm. This is Saturday. This is Church Day. Yes, I. This is, mm -hmm. this is Saturday. This is Saturday in rehearsal, right? Mm -hmm. Okanisa. Mimi, si jamita wasi, na si yanga tu na wajua. Iyo ndo time group wa wazi lukua imeanza wanza. So, I don't know what I mean. Because, what's your get-up at a ticket? It's expensive wapi. Misi juu. We used to get access to these things. Show up, enjoy the music, and you're like, wow, you know, wow. We see a kina roro playing, and it's crazy, man. It's like you're seeing... You're seeing, you're seeing a superstar, man. Yeah. So, so that happened, and uh, uh, so I pick up the phone. We had a conversation, and it's like, "Hey, I have a gig tomorrow afternoon." Tomorrow afternoon, that was the first blankets. The launch, like blankets, yeah, Kwanza in Anza. It was at Tiana Grounds. Uko manze ko mababi. So you can use amalitane sijui maliko. Let me just tell you, I don't know where Tiana is. Mm -hmm. But that was the first blanket. It's a very, it was a very bougie spot. Mm -hmm. Me, I was sick mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. because it doesn't have a gig tomorrow, uh, are you available to come? And I was like, Iko Sangapia, can I be Kofte? Iko Kofte, you're supposed to be there like, uh, I don't know, 3 p.m. or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm available. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, okay, we'll pick you up in town tomorrow. What's a good place, Miss Jutao? Mini kipat kanata tao na mama yangu, slippers, mbaka of our own, akimbizo na hivi. Unaduni ni tao kizana. What would I do? Yes, so, Niko Form 3. Boss, ukirezi ya geto, unaenda tao kufanya nini, unatafka, umekuwa, umekuwa take, unaenda video watu. I don't know, anything could give. So, um, we had this conversation, so, and we agreed that, uh, we are gonna meet in tao. Alisa matu bata Hilton, you know, wadu ni dishika. So, I was so excited back then, the guys who I was, you know, playing with in church. One of them is called Brian Kagema. He was 
in between instruments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> I can see people <laughs> reacting here to me, you know, playing block as my first gig. So, uh, what so what uh, are you, bro? From three, <laughs> yeah. Hey. yeah, from three, man. I was me on top of my game. Well, and you know the funny <laughs> thing is that people, people, people who are watching you don't tell you stuff. Or if a musician, this is this is again Kenyan musicians. A musician, you might impress someone. You're not trying to impress them, but mm-hmm. the fact that everyone has their own way of interpreting something, mm-hmm. it should be it should be interesting to your ears. Yeah, because it's a song maybe you've played before, but the way they interpret it, the way they groove to it, should be able mm-hmm. to impress you. Mm-hmm. So this is something I tell everyone. I'm like, just go tell someone and say, "Hey, boss, manafunga." To me, but he like will see a crazy person. Yeah, to judge that. Boss, I'm not going to tell you. I'm <laughs> but I'm cool at easy, what are kumbuki parts? But uh-huh. this time, like, you know, you're from a bass player to a bass player, from a guitar player, keyboard player, drummer, singer, mm-hmm. you know, everyone just, you know, go tell someone, hey, this was really amazing. You did something. It doesn't have to be everything, but that one thing <coughs> will stand out. Mm-hmm. Give someone their flowers right there, man. Don't hold on to it. Mm-hmm. It's important. So, so, uh, 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 Kinabrayo, Levy, Levy, I don't know if Levy plays nowadays, he used to play keys, he used to, he used to, you know, split, when he said, I'm to split bass with keyboard, when he said, I'm going to So those are the guys I grew up with, uh, David Ogara, uh, Noah and his brother Noah, mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure you guys know them. I, I, uh, I know Noah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and Devi, Devi, you know people for Adonage. So we started Adonage, me, Devi and Noah. In fact, it's just three of us. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. uh, I don't just started the two of us because we used to, you know, go perform at Talent Many if you go, if you guys have ever heard about it, mm-hmm. uh, and we merged like the most, you know, prominent band. We were just mm-hmm. at our stuff, and everybody wanted to be part of us. And then we played mm-hmm. for this lady who joined us. Her name is uh, Rosalind Muhaki. If you mm-hmm. guys know her, she was part of Adonis as well, and that's how Adonis became. To be everyone just you know picked a friend brought them together started meeting and it blew mm-hmm. up oh, okay. uh yeah so those are the guys that i grew up playing with so that we we're just talking just telling them, hey aroro call me this is aroro i don't remember the one i don't remember is like one go no one will believe me i just tell you i'm sure i'm gonna so but uh-huh. hey uh me that was me uh, mm-hmm. so i had to go home and had to convince my mom uh-huh. To you know, uh, uh, help me get to Tao. I didn't have cash. I didn't have tunes, even tunes to <laughs> to take a job to Tao because we mm-hmm. Tao kufanya again. <laughs> so True. convince my mom to give me transportation to Tao. I'll figure myself. Mm-hmm. I'll figure my way back, coming back. Mm-hmm. So I can't find anything coming and after the drums. Mm-hmm. Yeah, show me to conduct the drugs. So, because that time, that 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 time in Eastlands, uh, there used to be a lot of macaron. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what was was a lot of people who were picking pocketers. We got a lot of wheezy sun in that area, and uh, it messed up a lot of stuff in uh, during that period. Uh, so, parents were really worried about the kids. But when you do not short, we are just a camo to do your journey. You go police station and subi watu wako kamku angali yakama. Uko uko. That's pretty much the only place you end up. So my mom was worried about what time I'm gonna get back. So mm-hmm. so I told him I'm gonna be back early. As soon as I'm done, I'll leave. You know, you're not gonna stay early. It's gonna be like mm-hmm. a, a one hour set. Malina enda. Mm-hmm. Then in pelega maga speed. Kama menishi kamko no kuminga za kwa mat. <laughs> Man, mm-hmm. um, uh, it was funny because I remember this so well. Ali and the home say, "Boss, um, total, make sure me feel commercial no me work about a Hilton." Man, the only responsibility. It takes a village to raise a kid. Man, that was when it mm-hmm. was actually working. Because that mm-hmm. guy, Ali, feel like I'm back about a Hilton. Just go on a job and I say, "Me feel up commercial." That time, just only only don't that. Only don't that. Yeah, but Madonna and Julikana and Vijana and Julikana and Asia Eastland. So Marie, she is area number she got on a Juana. So the two are so a compatible from Kono Minikanda. You go down, Kashisho, but a Hilton. Miss Wapon in a parara. Never parara. 
<laughs> See now, uh-huh. sticks, uh, things uh-huh. used to work pretty different. You don't know mm-hmm. where you're gonna get sticks, but hey, you just show up for the job. And mm-hmm. uh, at that time, it, it I, I, I didn't have anything to do with um, how much am I going to make out of mm-hmm. this gig. I was just, am I going to deliver this gig? Am I going to have mm-hmm. fun playing drums? Because yeah. I don't know how gigs work and how paying gigs work because we didn't talk about payment or anything of that sort. It was just like, hey, show up for gig. We're going to have fun. I'm going to play these guys. First of all, I don't know who I'm going to play for. I'm mm-hmm. going to play for Joseph Helen. You guys oh. know Helen. Yeah, uh, Helen. What to Helen? What's name in the comment section? Helen, Helen <laughs> is by far, until now, the best saxophone player that I know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm yet to see someone come close to, to his skill. Mm-hmm. How he plays, how he interprets stuff. Mm-hmm. Not because I worked with him, because it's just because how his music has stuck with me throughout the years. Leave mm-hmm. alone the scandals and everything, man. Mm-hmm. Helen, mm-hmm. one on one like this, he's a very great guy, mm-hmm. and he's a even an a, like crazy musician, straight mm-hmm. up. So he, he was auditioning for a drama. I wasn't told mm-hmm. I'm coming for an audition. <laughs> I was on stage, up, on stage, man. So uh, this is me, Aruro. Helen and his wife, Cleo, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I see this bands, man. So they picked me up. Uh, hey, boss, you have Panda Benz, boss. Imagine what younger ones are, do you Panda Benz? Uh-huh. Well, I was shaking, literally. I was so uncomfortable. Uh-huh. And I was quiet at the same time. So I was seated at the back with Aro uh-huh. and uh, his wife. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Helen and the wife were seated uh, up front. So, um, so do you know rehearsal was by a mouth just mumbling stuff and beats. So mm-hmm. the one thing that I think I pride myself in or I appreciate myself for back mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. was that I was able to learn beats by their names. So I've been told you're playing quite you're gonna be playing uh one drop sort of aquana kapuka kwajas bus up no 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 that I refuse. Kapuka is a, is a negative. <laughs> uh-huh. So um, so imagine Aaron Aaron just took took the oath of uh, he told me I know we haven't rehearsed but I've been told you can do this so I'm gonna be starting all the songs and you, you know if Aaron starts it he starts it mm-hmm. yeah, so so that was pretty much it and um, we got to the gig uh, we did our set we threw down crazy 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 everything went mm-hmm. great on stage people mm-hmm. no one could tell that you haven't rehearsed for me it was just to maintain the beat hold the beat do a roll transition mm-hmm. so just just say hey transition you just hey you know call out mm-hmm. some other stuff and mm-hmm. uh that, 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 that was how pretty much the gig was and uh, it was a very fun gig my mm-hmm. fun first gig me came to have fun and i i really i really didn't pay much attention as to what so when you were backstage and we are now uh, uh munching on our lunch uh is when Aruru asked Helen so what do you think of this guy and Helen was like this is our guy from now so oh. that's how I landed my first uh full time whatever professional gig as a drummer I started with uh Joseph Helen and Aaron Rimbui and that was like my big break from there oh. any other thing mm-hmm. that was happening that Aaron was involved in I used mm-hmm. to get the first call and mm-hmm. and, uh, and through that, I got to meet Aaron's brother, who is Tim Rimbui. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tim Rimbui uh, took me in uh, since he was the director, music director for Temi back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, this is after I played at uh, at at uh, was it Wamai's wedding? I think it was Wamai and Karimi's wedding at Mavuno mm-hmm. at uh, Bellevue. Bellevue was big back then. That was mm-hmm. when you know they were building up. So. That's when I got to meet Akina Kanji. Everybody was there. I was like, who's this young kid? And everything. Mm-hmm. So we just came and threw down. We had fun. It was like an impromptu. Those ones were, hey, tomorrow there's a wedding. You need to come. It used to be like a day or in the evening off. It's like, I don't know what you're going to do. But hey, it used to be a niche. Uh, the first, I didn't talk about Blank. It's the first gig I made 8K. 8K was stupid money back then. And it almost got me in trouble with my mom because he didn't know uh-huh. I got this so much money. 
when I go back home. So no, so when I when I go go home, no, I don't know. It's really bad. So uh-huh. so you know, uh, just having to explain to him, and mm-hmm. he was he just waited before he even spent the money to see if any drama was gonna come around. Uh-huh. Yeah, so nothing came, and I told him it's a gig. I play drums, and that's it. So after that, I had back. To, I was making money. Oh man, I wish I was wise then. And mm-hmm. <laughs> could have saved or invested my money a little bit more earlier into the, you know, into the, into my musical career. So uh, I was just mm-hmm. making a lot of money. I used to gig like uh, three to four gigs every other week. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just got only better, man. I used to play for everybody, man. If anybody wanted a drummer, Brian was the guy. Mm-hmm. If you see my portfolio, my rapo, Yanni, uh, the only thing I, I I usually ask guys, is you you tell me your favorite artist, and I tell you if I haven't played. Mm-hmm. That's the I, only thing I tell guys because man, as in I have a catalog. It's it's pretty mm-hmm. it's pretty crazy to think about it. Mm-hmm. So I tell guys, um, I'm like okay, it they uh, walk wing walk wing. You mentioned you just mentioned someone not from the Gen Z era. Don't let it go. But just mention the people that you know, might pop into your mind, and I'll tell you if I've played. And finally, I've uh, played for mm-hmm. pretty much anyone you might think of mm-hmm. and i think it's really a privilege and it's a very major blessing mm-hmm. uh, it's something that i can't trade for anything it's been a crazy experience it has mm-hmm. built me in so many ways uh, mm-hmm. uh being able to interpret music or any project that might come the, the that's the same one that you know got me uh into uh Tusker project fame all stars the last one that happened mm-hmm. i was pretty young man i did i did such big shows at a very tender age as in i got to rub shoulders with very big people and mm-hmm. as in you know as in i mean i, I, I saw you on on, on tpf all stars and i think at yeah. this time if i'm not wrong if you, you can correct me but i think at this time you were playing for a donage and i think that's the first one um okay i don't need uh, one of the two because <laughs> I, I remember i was you were playing somewhere and uh because the first the first interaction with you actually the first time i had you play i think the, the thing that stood out and i think we've joked about this before but in this case now i'm saying because i'm a guy who's an happy guy now and then yeah. it, you know it's it's funny because it's the same snare i've seen i've played but it's like I, that is you mean, <laughs> something has just changed i'm like what's going on i'm only taping you in a cocoa streets you know so i think after that because i i remember seeing you that then now on tv when when tpf was happening because mm-hmm. i'd seen george mutinda before then i was like when when the all-stars thing came in because that you guys were like three bands mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Then that I was, was like, uh team 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 is mm-hmm. three which was the band was playing for yeah, then it was, uh, Chris Sadwar was the leader for the Villages, the second uh-huh. band, and then the main yeah, band was Rimbui. Aaron Rimbui's band. Yeah, yeah. So I saw you then. I'm like, what's it? I've seen this guy. You what's know, i So I was like, whoa, hey, okay. So, but then again, but then I, um, like, I, I just seen you. So I was like, wow, hey, okay, okay. Yeah. This guy's a big deal, but a big deal because big to me, um. TPF was one of the shows that really uh, opened up my my ears apart from church because I was like that, that's the first interaction of way what on the Gamziki Kenya you know and this is yeah. like mm-hmm. the instruments and all that stuff and I was just Live, like man yeah. you guys are blazing hard you know so um I, that was my my interaction with you so and I wanted to ask you something else um mm-hmm. <clears throat> in regards to to that like so what was it like then now that you're talking about uh this whole music uh journey and uh how it has evolved how was it back mm-hmm. then especially when um trying to you know navigate like maybe riders you know mm-hmm. like were you did, was there a a vast uh number of kids that you could uh get amani bro gigumeka negative man uh, <laughs> uh, let me just start by saying change change is inevitable and uh 
as fast as you can adapt to change, you know, uh, things, things, things will work out more easier for you. So then what you get is what you work with. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So that is pretty much it. Whatever you found there is what you'd work with. And, but then during that period, you know, not many people were in the sound business and they were like, I think three, three, three kids in circulation in the entire Nairobi from I don't know who was providing things back then. Uh -huh. uh, but there wasn't that much of proper kids because even even T even TPF, you're using a normal Yamaha. Yeah. Yeah, so if if it's not a Yamaha gig maker, it's just a Yamaha flat and a Yamaha flat is good than a Yamaha gig maker, okay? <laughs> Makes sense. A gig maker, Sasandi or Manze, Chin Yamaha, like Shin Yamaha, Kabisa. Yeah. Uh, so the Yamaha flat used to sound more better. Uh, I think because of the wood that they used to make it with. Mm -hmm. So there was a there was a bit of there was a bit of you know the tone used to be a bit different. The kit looked the same mm -hmm. altogether, but if you look at maybe mm -hmm. the hardware, you can tell there's a bit of difference. Uh, and then back then, still there wasn't any way that you could get proper skins or drum heads. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to me as in the display. Stock. Yeah, you know, that's it, man. The one that came with the kid is only tuned back on it. So you pray that this damn thing doesn't turn in the middle of a show because that means the recordings of that day are done for. <laughs> so, yeah, we find ourselves on stage, you know, just watching each other. We see your snare sana. Wait. You hit him too hard, boss. We haven't done on any because everyone wants to do their session that day, not having to prolong, you know, the season mm -hmm. all through into that. So, so yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't much that much to choose from. It was just illegal, bado to the quarter adapt to mm -hmm. the newness of stuff. Yeah. Ah, that's 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 uh that's interesting. So mm -hmm. that means back then you guys were being consulted on like. Um, uh, at it, Tuma Rider, Vilisaizi Kuna Tuma Rider. Boss, no, 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 no. Symbols in the Zilean Google, SBR, the one you hit, you, you feel the shockwave go through your hand. Man, have you ever played a kid and you just avoid your. I'll take a crawl, June, I'll go to the Kunga Zapa. As funny as it sounds. <laughs> Oh man, ah, yeah, 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 oh, crazy, crazy. Yeah, so there was nothing like that back then, man. What you find there is what you use. Then at the end of the day, I tell you, if you are a proper musician, it doesn't really matter the instrument, man. If you can channel mm -hmm. your touch into any instrument, mm -hmm. anyone will be able to tell, uh, um, say, anajua, anajua viombo zake. that's it, I tell mm -hmm. you that for sure. As much as you're going to be able to complain and say, ah, you want to say, is this symbol in Raruka? Is it yeah. in Gumu? Uh, uh, clutch, they work. You may have a problem with people who use their clutch in a by the entire time and they keep on bringing bad clutches and they don't service them. What do I get dynamics? To service your equipment. I hear so, you. Um, hey. uh -huh. yeah, so um, back then what you find is what you work with. Just try to improvise and uh, uh -huh. yeah, 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 pretty much that's it. All right. Uh uh, and also, as we go on, I should let guys know that you can drop your questions for Brio Apokwa, mm -hmm. the Q, Q box, such a Twitter Q box. Mm -hmm. uh, so you guys can bring them in as we get to that section and that segment. Mm -hmm. will, Brio will answer as many questions as possible. The challenge is to make sure Brio I'm answer Zote. I'm answer Zote. <laughs> I don't know what correct means in this case, but. Uh, Bring it on, yeah. Bring so it you on, guys man. feel free to to drop them up. Alafu will will make sure we get to many of them as much as possible. So just be dropping them over there. I love to keep up. We'll for sure get to that. So Brio, <clears throat> now with the with the with the, with the music industry now really may change, and um, especially even with us in, instrumentalists, man. Um, nowadays there's there's a lot in variety. Um, do you remember the first time when you got to like, like play like a proper kit? The first proper kit that came in. How how was that like? How was the buzz like? 
ya yeah, in Nairobi. Juko na na bus kitu naona kikam. Ile mwaambia uh, na see. Yeah, Mimi na cheza wa kwanza. <laughs> I've, I've played pretty crappy drum kit. Uh-huh. Pretty much my entire life. I can say I've played a proper kit like anything that I've I've played is has been pretty much used. So I think the first the first kit that I played that everyone was gushing over uh-huh. was this DW that I think he posted very recently. Uh-huh. The, the one with the sparkles. Oh, the collector series, yeah. There, this this one and only DW drum in in the entire Kenya. There's no. Oh well, there are two now. There are two. I haven't seen the second one, so uh, it's fine. So that <laughs> that kit uh-huh. that happened to be like the worst kit I ever played out of all the oh. kits. Uh, yeah, man, and it was still fresh. Uh, uh-huh. This guy called Tom. Tom was for live gigs. Uh-huh. Do you remember live gigs? They were like the biggest sound. Yeah, 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 and everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm, mm, so mm. Tom, Tom had invested in like stupid, 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 crazy equipment. Mm-hmm. So um uh it was uh it was the uh, it was the period where Al Shabab was going to report us it out everywhere man say kila mali mnasikia tu kuna Al Shabab on a plan ku detun I don't know what or what mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh you were supposed to have TSO mm-hmm. yeah, is it, is it was, was, was this the TSO that happened uh was it to alikuwa like you guys were performing online because i think I, i think it was like that's the one yeah 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 yeah, yeah that one that yeah. one yeah so uh-huh. we, we they we had one of the spaces they set up in one of the spaces at citizen tv and mm-hmm. uh you know uh there's there's this one thing about kenyan kenya kenya, kenya sound musicians st- sound or sound providers yeah <laughs> they have this thing where uh, motif is the best keyboard so that keyboard this is going to like it okay whether he likes it or not yeah he he has to like it he has to like it um this so um this this dw drum world is supposed to be the best drum kit of course yeah uh, drum workshop I, yeah the, my brother uh, also, don't go to let me shout out my brother up and it was akalpa i don't know whether he's on this live mm-hmm. but you see atakuja na bazooka hapa kumalize because he He loves DW as well. Okay, man, everyone, everyone is entitled to the LP, man. So, uh, uh-huh. where they want to kill me, hey, it's okay, man. You love it, cheers. I don't love it, hey. We just kill him to now. Pandit to your kids, you know. So, um, uh-huh. yeah, that, that, that kit, that was just the worst kit man I ever played. And it was still fresh back then. Uh, uh-huh. So, which, which year was this, do you remember? I can I can fit it come on the 2012 I I can't really recall no my memory is not that good I can't recall oh, that okay. much sorry uh-huh. so um you know it has a rack right right the drum rack yes uh, and that's the first thing I saw when I checked into the studio season you know came coming for setup you know to do sound check and just to prepare equipment and everything uh, I was playing with uh, Tito Tito Monaco was on bass Benjamin Kabaseke was on guitars uh Kaima Mwiti was directing so mm-hmm. uh so we checked into the studio man and this thing has filled half the room and I'm like boss it's not live recording it's it's not like a festival it it oh man Oh, and I'm like, okay, it's here. <laughs> so I'm just telling myself, what is the purpose of this huge kit, man? This is too much. This is too much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I sit down, uh, you know, I set up the kit. I do my tuning and all that stuff. Um, the one thing that pisses me off is that everything looks big. Mm-hmm. I look at the Tom 1, it looks similar. It looks like it's the same size to Tom 2, uh-huh. right? So when I do my math I'm like this this is not a 12 this has to be a 13 and this one must be a 14 it's like an inch it's like <laughs> and it's very hard to tell them apart Uh-huh So at first I'm trying to pin this thing I'm like is Tom 2 Tom 2's pitch higher than Tom 1 or <laughs> what's going on Or you know just ended up you know I don't know, like you know what I'll, I'll just tune it to the way you need to hear it sound 
and that's uh-huh. going to be pretty much it. Let me tell you mm-hmm. how they had this time tuning that kit. Mm-hmm. Uh, then again, I'd be like, maybe the acoustics uh, were the cause for it to sound in that way. Mm-hmm. When later on, I played it somewhere else in an open space and I can't even hide it, man. If you can't tune a drum in an open air space, then that kit is bad straight up. There's nothing because it can't echo, it can't muffle, it, like the sound in a Yamaziapo kitchen. So you get the actual thing you're trying to get, okay? Mm-hmm. This was the worst kit. It was just the worst kit. But then I gave it a benefit of doubt. I'm like, maybe it's the heads because these heads look, look old. As if you want a Gina, and then mm-hmm. on the resonant head, known as mm-hmm. I'm like, he's in to do the display, but not on a tune that's the reason why I'm like, it's a good kit, but it hasn't been mm-hmm. treated properly, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for it to perform to its maximum. Just get proper heads and all that stuff, but that wasn't my job, it wasn't my kid. So the most mm-hmm. I can do is complain. And if <laughs> the providers listen, well and good. If they don't, hey, we'll, we'll have to suck it up. Yeah, so th- I think that was the worst kit I've ever played. The best kit I've ever played was a gig maker. Uh, mm-hmm. Gig maker, which I used to request for my gigs until recently. I think it was sold. Mm-hmm. It was... Uh, was it, was it the, the gig maker of... with the 10 and 12? Because yes. I remember asking you about it and you, you told me about it. Yeah. That is the one. The only person who had that gig maker was uh, Tim Rimboy since he bought it for his studio. And it bought the story behind that thing is so funny. I'm not going to talk about it, but it it, mm-hmm. it was such a bug and it was one of the best kits ever bought because it was tunable so easily. The wood mm-hmm. was like so amazing. Mm-hmm. And then it's, 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 uh, was it a 20, 22 inch kick with small mm-hmm. toms? So it's, yeah. it's heavy and it gives you the pitchy toms. Uh-huh. As in, you'll never find a better kit. You mm-hmm. will never find a better kit. People mm-hmm. really dis- despise gig maker, but you don't know that while I was saying you want to let a gig maker and you want to go to Gini, you want to buy. You want to let a gig maker display, but kuna gig maker quality. And mm-hmm. that was the only one that was in Kenya, which mm-hmm. was uh, uh, later sold to Gig Dynamics. Gig Dynamics mm-hmm. later sold it to someone who I don't know about, because mm-hmm. when I requested it for a gig, it wasn't there. That's when they told mm-hmm. me that the, the kit is no longer, no longer there. Me and I never used to go for tamas. Because me, I call in. I'm like, boss, I uh, have this gig. It's a mm-hmm. this and this place. This is how the Nini looks like. And uh, if I'm not able to make it to the warehouse mm-hmm. to see what, what I can get, mm-hmm. uh, I'll just tell them, get me this specific gig, uh, kit. Mm-hmm. Or get me Nini with these uh, sizes of, you know. And they'll be able to just get They'll tell me, we have this, we have this, we have this. But normally, mm-hmm. I always ended up taking the gig maker. Mm-hmm. Because I was used to it, I could tune it so easily. It used to, you know, uh, like work properly with any other head you throw at it. You give it a head, whatever mm-hmm. time it might be, might be coated, might be clear, mm-hmm. it works perfectly. Because I've mm-hmm. done most of my gigs with it. So, so yeah. At the end of the day, I still respect Yamaha so much when it comes mm-hmm. to making quality kits mm-hmm. and not overdoing it. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Stick to your no, no, not a big I know where that gig maker is, and also <clears> where <throat> another gig maker, where another similar gig maker is. I know. Come chop it up to Mumbai. Akurudishi ni yako. Your first love. If I'm, if I'm able to buy it, I'd, I'd actually buy that kid straight up if it's still in uh, proper condition to be just mm-hmm. you know for you to you can be able to just hard uh, add hardware and tops, you know. To just to your mm-hmm. liking and all that stuff, I'd, I'd actually be willing to buy that kit because I tried so many times, but most of the time, soon I can't buy any other. But hey, Biggie, I'll connect with you. <laughs> Thanks for that info, man. Appreciate it. Um, so uh, you, you've uh, mentioned tuning, and let's just get into tuning a bit. I know it's more of a live uh, mm-hmm. interaction and more than a mm-hmm. masterclass, and I think uh, at this point, uh, it's, it's safe to say we should we should do a masterclass with, where we can actually talk more practical stuff, yeah. uh, which we plan for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you can, mm-hmm. even on this live, can you can you like maybe perhaps just give the basics of like how you tune your drums and um, I know perhaps you're tuning based on the room 
situation, yeah. the, the yeah. type of music that you're going to play. Um, so what is normally going through your mind when you're doing all this stuff? What is What are you thinking about? This is uh, my baby, man. Uh, ah! This is a gator gator case also on a tulipa manzelot no patia na so much jini. This is if you wanna get a, a a drum case or just casings for your drums, mm-hmm. they're very cheap online. You can just ship them in. This this mm-hmm. gator case is a padded inside. You can just mm-hmm. just import them man. If you love your kids, if you love your your props and you want them to yeah. last long. So yeah. So let me just take you through that briefly on how that's right. gonna go. Uh, so uh this is uh this is my baby. Uh, name is Black Panther. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you can see it too. Well. Uh, okay. We're kind of forever. So um, this is a uh, a six point five from top to bottom, like the uh-huh. height. Six point uh-huh. five by fourteen. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The radius. So uh, but, uh, I love it. My previous. Yes, my previous snare. This is when I just discovered deep snares, and I immediately fell in love with deep snares. That I said my first snare was going to be a deep snare. Uh-huh. So my first snare was a pork pie, which was uh, slightly deeper than this. That was a uh, that was uh, like a seven, uh, seven height by thirteen. So you can tell uh-huh. the difference. This one is wide, fourteen an inch. Uh, mm-hmm. An inch, an inch, an inch uh, longer than the other one, and uh, this one is shorter. This mm-hmm. one is six point five, and the pork pie, which is the smaller one, mm-hmm. is seven deeper. So that was that was that that was my first snare, which which Jaziel. My For first. anyone asking and wondering <laughs> where that pork pie is, we need your papa. So many uh-huh. people wanted that snare, but Jaziel had the money when I was ready to offload it so hey invest he, banner <laughs> so he he bought it almost immediately mm-hmm. uh as soon as he put it in the market and uh mm-hmm. i had to do a top up to get this one uh, so mm-hmm. anyway this is this is a mapex mm-hmm. uh black panther brass snare okay mm-hmm. so uh i'm using a uh this is a remo, a remo. Mm-hmm. that's Go a 377 yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I I don't know. I had I had I can't remember which drama I saw use this, uh-huh. but uh, uh, I think it works well on a brass snare, not just on any on any on any snare drum. So uh-huh. because someone might take this and put it on a wooden kit, right? And not knowing what you're looking for might throw you off. Okay, so. Right. So for me, it sounded better on a brass. So that's why I got this. This one, this one is mm-hmm. the same. This one, it I, I got them. I got them both as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the wire as well. This one uh, is the. Uh, it's not the wider one. I had a wider one which came with the previous kit, but I think Jazzy took both of them. <laughs> I am here. So, <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> uh, so. I, I wish I could be able to demonstrate properly on how I tune my kit, but I normally mm-hmm. tune it on a clockwise basis. So let's say this is my 12, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll go all the way down to my 6, all right? Mm-hmm. If you can see properly. This is my 12, this is my 6, okay? Yep. Yep. So I'll, start, I'll loosen everything up, and then I'll, I'll tune it to a point where it's not able to, like, finger tight. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll do all the all the all the knots finger tight, okay? So then I'll give this four clicks with a tuner. This is the six uh-huh. o'clock, right? Uh huh. So I'll give it so four four, six four full turns. Yeah, four. Uh, let me just say one eighty degrees. That's half, okay. not full uh-huh. turns. Yeah. Yeah. So half, six okay. turns. So that makes it three full circle, 360. Okay, if, if you know your directions and your math. So um, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give that uh, six uh, half turns, and then I'll mm-hmm. go back all the way up now to my 12 o'clock. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do the same. Mm-hmm. Then I'll move to my one o'clock. All right. Mm-hmm. Make, make sense. 
Yep. All right, uh, I'll do six as well. And then I'll move, uh, if this is my six, this is my seven. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to my seven, just down across, okay? Mm -hmm. And so on. once I'm done with this, I'm going to jump to my eight, and then I'll move to mm -hmm. the two, and all, so on, all through the other kit, now until I get a proper balance all around. Because mostly, mm -hmm. what I see with many kits or most snares that I, you know, find at gigs that I come uh, to play at, or uh, churches I attend and I have to play someone, is that you notice that this section is somewhere over here. <laughs> it's been tightened to a point uh -huh. where now there's no balance all around. Which, so, so the thing is uneven. Yeah. So if you tighten this one so much, it's going to pull the thing all the way in. But if you come and try to tighten this one, uh -huh. this one will have already taken uh, more you know, more tuning on, on this other end in mm -hmm. a way that it pulls, it stretches the membrane to right. the point where mm -hmm. now you can't tune this other side, but now this other side mm -hmm. is is going to have a crazy gap on this other side, which now makes it uneven and you're not being able, you're not able to, to get a proper, you know, balanced or mm -hmm. level even sound all through. So that's how you normally start for this one. Once mm -hmm. I get the uh, top head, uh, uh, well tuned uh, to, you know, to my dribbling, you know, mm -hmm. the placement of the stick, mm -hmm. then I move, I move all the way down. But down mm -hmm. here, I don't have much, but to get the sound that, that I want, I, I, I normally just, just take my time, depending on what mm -hmm. I do. If you can see this, this has been here since I got, that I even ended up removing mm -hmm. one of the nuts. You seeing this? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, tell me me you mean it's too. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I removed <laughs> this. So I removed this after I think I think I did three three to four gigs with this now. Uh -huh. And then I realized that this one is throwing my balance off or my uh -huh. tone off. So uh -huh. And that way I've been able to balance my snare all through when it comes to tuning and everything nowadays. I don't tune mm -hmm. the lower side. I just normally tune the upper section of it and I'm able to get any sound I want out of this snare. Right. So that's it. But I'm investing in another wooden snare soon enough. You guys should be able to see it soon enough. Just be on the lookout for that. Yeah, ah, that's how it is. Know that. yeah, man. Ah, no negative. Ah. <laughs> but but that, that's very interesting. Like I, I, I didn't know like you, you actually removed a lug. I, I think it's something that I'll, I'll definitely experiment with and see like what, what types of sounds that can come from that. Yeah. But that's, that's very interesting. Having that um, actually right next to the snare wires, you know? Yep, 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 yeah. yep, lined up with that for sure. So, so that's, that's yeah, very so interesting. I'll give you a You've, you've seen that out. You just don't remove <laughs> it from anywhere and all that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I tried. If maybe it might, it might, it might, might work on you. Wooden snare. It might not work. I don't know. It, it might be different. I don't know. It's a bigger snare. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I feel like you need to expand. The reason I sold that snare is because it didn't have, it didn't pack enough punch for me. After a while, mm -hmm. it sounded mm -hmm. nice, but after I listened to a couple of recordings, it was squealing out. was squealing a lot. That's why it's called the little squealer. Uh, you know, like a pig, mm -hmm. and all that. So I was like. Okay, the snare sounds nice, but I'd mm -hmm. get it like a second snare, not a main snare. But I wasn't in a position yeah. to, you know, invest in another snare and keep this as a second. So I had to float that to get a main snare. So so I wanted something mm -hmm. bigger and that packs a heavier punch without being loud. Because if, you have, if you've had me play this snare, it normally muffles the sound almost immediately you hit it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it packs a very heavy punch on that bit, yeah. Yeah. Ah, awesome, awesome. No, now put on an MBA news is Z. You know, yes, yes. collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get a collaborate. But I hear you. Um, I've been doing research actually. I'm actually on. I'm thinking of trying to get something uh, a little bit different. Um, and just experimenting again with all these things because uh, I realized that one of the ways you get to be very knowledgeable about all these things is actually by experimenting you know yeah for sure um doing some research um checking out reviews what what are people saying about this and what are people saying about that um mm -hmm. 
but your your I'll, I'll say this your pork pie well it's not my pork pie <laughs> but the the, the 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 pork pie was was very to me was very it had a very different sound mm -hmm. that i was like and I think that at the time when I heard it, because I couldn't explain exactly what's happening, but I was just like, eh, kuna kitu, unajele, kuna tuanza, wana kuliza, ulitu inaji smea yako. Yeah. Well, kuna kutune, lakini pia, kuna smea pia yenyewe. Exactly. So yeah. it's like, yeah, so because when I heard it, and then I was like, so I think there's a gig I was at where you're playing, and we just took the house smea, lafuke kayak, ni kasema, Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> you know, so uh, and I think yeah, uh, as people are saying Monapa ni kana sema research muhimu, yeah, definitely. Um mm -hmm. and I, I actually want to give you a shout out cuz you also pushed me towards that um I think there's a time I was asking you about um even drum heads and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, hey, what's, what's yeah. your opinion on this and uh, you give me your opinion but it, it would also be like go check it out and you know see for yourself yeah. what works for your situation listen to it you see it sounds in 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 any specific area that you want you know so mm -hmm. and with that let me let me just ask you so do you have a preference in terms of drum heads because i know that's a question probably people are yeah. asking yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. I do. Uh, uh, for my snare definitely remo uh -huh. whether clear or coated it's remo uh -huh. all through for the uh -huh. snare um for the membranes i'm an even sky but not the uh -huh. two uh, membranes that they made very recently i don't like them i haven't liked them i've never liked them <laughs> uh so uh, i don't know what, what experiment it is that they were doing with those with those membranes uh -huh. but I'd, I'd say even so at the end of the day a uh, double membrane on top uh for my butter uh -huh. head i want a double uh -huh. and then uh i want a single below Mm -hmm. All right, because normally I do my tuning with the resonance head. I don't do my tuning on top. Once I tune my head with the clicks that I normally do for every other kit, the, mm -hmm. every other thing happens down below here to get the sound that I'm looking for, okay? Mm -hmm. And then again, it depends on the size of the tom as, as well. I tell people, you know, uh, uh, you know let's say 8, eight 10... 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 for the toms. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I think drum, uh, drum manufacturers have, I'm going to be a little bit, excuse me, I'm going to be a 12, 13. That's the same thing I was telling you about, where tom one and tom two almost look. <laughs> yeah, because the tone difference is very small. <laughs> yeah. It's it's very, 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 like the margin is very, very kidogo. Yeah. So uh, one thing I advocate for for guys as well, you see the same way I, I tell drummers, buy your snare, buy your cymbal. I tell people invest in an eight inch drum because they are sold online. Pretty much you just get one and get a boom stand or just a full stand for it. Mm -hmm. Not that you're going to use it everywhere, but for a time where Utaji Pataka situation, you come in me, I'm very keen when it comes to that. When I get to the stage, and, uh, I wasn't able to decide on what kit I'm getting, or one last one, I let a sound and decide, ah, Brana Sumbuanga. So the only people who can do that to me is Ben I'm able to try and understand them. So, mm -hmm. so, um, so I tell people, get an eight inch and uh, mm -hmm. just on standby. For sure, because eight inch, eight inch C C C tom in a chazo kila mali. For me, eight inch me it's a very special tom. It's peachy. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. In a very sweet way, you know. It's that, it's that one tom where you touch it once and guys want to see ni ninu meguza. Then they're like, kuna tom. It's because it's so small. Man. <laughs> Same goes for the hi hats for me. The smaller yeah. it is, the crispy it's gonna be. So mm -hmm. 12 inch going down for the hot. Anything from there because nowadays they have 14 or maybe they have a ride. So I think ride. So I think they It's not even fun anymore. So I don't know what kind of people use those things. 
or it's for some purposes. But me, mm-hmm. the smaller, the smaller such things are specifics, the more I'm gonna run towards them because I feel like they normally end up delivering uh, the kind of sound that I'm looking for. It's particularly more because it is kizanga to yena kwenye metenga nazo for that high. I agree. And once you touch that, when you're playing with proper season musicians, people who are not all trying to show off mm-hmm. or be in each other's face, people <laughs> give it, you know, so people give each other space to, I'm like, it's just my turn to roll. Stop doing it. Let me just roll. And everyone comes. Mm-hmm. Can I please? You don't need to do much. Like mm-hmm. just disciplined, a just simple rule. Don't tune them properly, you know, in a way that they're uniform all across. Mm-hmm. But eight, 18 is that diva in the band. Mm-hmm. That one is like, yeah, you guys are not going to get hit today. I'm going to get hit on and hard today. By the way. <laughs> you guys be ready for it. So, <laughs> ah, man. So, uh, 18, 18 is a very important, it's a, it's a very important term, but not many people, uh, service providers rather, or sound equipment providers have invested in it. I can't remember the last time I saw an 18, an 18 channel kit. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe Zile Makani says in here, wow, chachananga, pasia ma pati ya mita, shikini mnumu kit. Wazana kamu wana tafu wa kit. Moja, tafu wapo maze, but there's no one to play it properly. But I said, you're like, hey, miko ni kare nangu tuliko se hapi. Because you guys are just crying over something like a symbol which is torn, has been torn for like years, no one has to buy it. The consensus, man, we appreciate you passing by the way. All you guys, maze, we the musicians and the instruments very seriously because music plays mm-hmm. one of the biggest roles, if not the biggest, mm-hmm. when it comes to church and worship. And that's one thing that everyone needs to, you know, just at least appreciate or rather acknowledge. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So for me, for me, for me, I take a double. We were talking about uh, the heads, the double mm-hmm. on the top, and a single. Uh, below, which fly. makes it much easier for me. Yeah, yeah. single fly. So uh-huh. that makes it much easier for me to tune all across. And then uh, I prefer a 16-inch floatom to a 14-inch. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. anytime I'm able, I'm able to skip a 14. If a kit comes with uh, two floatoms, um, I, I normally end up ditching the 14 and staying with the 16 uh-huh. because my 16 sometimes acts as the, as the kick. It reduces so much work for me when. Uh-huh. I have a longer gig and mm-hmm. it's a high energy gig. So most of the things I have to substitute, I can be yeah. playing doubles and triples and mm-hmm. like okay. very low end mm-hmm. way that if I shikanisha the kick with the tom in a way mm-hmm. that I personally know in my own ways, mm-hmm. not be able to tell. So and if I'm rolling, if you just need to do that, you know, very low, high hat and tone mm-hmm. hit before you go to a song, it's the mm-hmm. most beautiful sound ever for me. So, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Man, sure. thanks so much. I, yeah. I, I think on that, we'll, we'll get to do probably like a masterclass or like a, a, a one-on-one session where we can have guys come in to start to, to uh, unpack you like in a practical way so that you know yeah. <clears throat> people get to even hear these sounds how how big uh your 16 inch can sound your yeah. your 8 inch to apata to apata eight because 8 inch toms are also very rare as you've said very rare yeah yeah, yeah. but you you in daughter you in daughter it's okay let me let me not let me just i will hold that for now <laughs> so so let me we we can jump to the a Q and A uh, session section, and I'm seeing here there's someone who has a question, mm-hmm. and he's asking which method when using the kick pedal, uh, which method is better when using the kick pedal, heel up or heel down. Uh, the question is being asked by Mwenda Ben. But I think again it depends on the kick pedal that you're using. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, do people understand that you need to like do adjustments on your pedal on uh, the pressure yep. everything that's one thing you need to understand it so that's the determining factor because when your heel is up means you're using a lot of force 
to drive the pedal, mm-hmm. all right? Mm-hmm. Like, kuna kanyaga shetani mazi, ndo yu kisonge. So it's just a matter of just losing the the spring, the one that's normally right. I think on the right side, losing it mm-hmm. all the way down. To a point, mm-hmm. sima ni tatoka almost muisho. Just ensure that your pedal is, if kiguzata na mkone vi kidogo, it will just be bouncing all along. So mm-hmm. that's that's that, that's pretty much the deciding factor. You can play foot down, foot up, Mm-hmm. Whichever way it goes, man. So it depends. Unless you get a very bad kick, uh, kick pedal, which can be, you know, uh, you can't do anything about the mechanical. So that yeah. means now you have to play foot up all the time. So those, those are things that I think, as a drummer, you need to understand why do I have to struggle playing, you know, doubles or shuffling my feet on this kit. And if I go back to my own kit, I'm, I'm good, you know. Nikamo kam, when you musicians with Chitara can be just you want to know my my double kick my double kick and then the kick was that one from Biamanze he keep the kick na kuanga ngumu and then they like ah we both are do it away uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. yes, it was just as in no one will be able to understand so it's just a matter of telling them hey uh, i just have a bad pedal that's it wow and you can't be able to do anything so yeah that's 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 the idea but the school lazy come on as a chevy do the entire time I tell that people all the time, like, you mm-hmm. uh, what do you call it, like, uh, heal, heal up, mm-hmm. and that you may take much pressure on all that. And then it depends again on the setting of your drum throne, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so drum throne, keep on the juice, of course, you can heal up. Yeah, me normally set my snare level with my drum throne. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if if maybe you look at the videos that maybe I've posted and you can tell kiti yangu na kiti yenye nimekalia na the snare drums na kuanga almost the same level. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. for me gives me there's a certain sitting position. It's something that I just figured out. Mm-hmm. If I do that I never have problems playing, but if I just come and sit on a drum kit and la pigia snare hapa juu, come on, there are seven. <laughs> I'll struggle just uh-huh. the time, like at the beginning of the gig. So set uh-huh. the kit, take, take your time, adjust the kit to a point where you're comfortable. If you want to play foot down, adjust the kit where your foot is going to be down and you don't have to put so much energy and you still end up doing what you can do and playing foot up. So yeah, pretty much it. Wow, all right. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. I hope Moenda Ben and I feel um, answered. Nona, I am Toria. <clears throat> and Oliza, who are your favorite drummers? Uh, I know it's a wide uh, uh, list. You could uh, really uh, at least give us five. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Five is a lot, man. That's a lot. That's no. really a lot. Uh, so, uh, uh, top of that list is uh, Chris Coleman. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Aaron Spears. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Lanelle Lewis. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, so since I have to give five, who else can I throw on that on that list? Uh, I'd say I'd say uh, Calvin Rogers as well, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think I'll run this. I think I'll run this. Yeah, the, oh, it's good, man. Uh, it's good. Yeah, for, Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. Oh, so, good, so if come out to your drummers, our drummers, you can go check them out. Yeah, yeah. I love who gives a brayo for your list. Yeah, man. 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 Yeah, is a see drums is a this the electronics ones it was so uh, the personal electronic drums just don't do it for me it's not the same as compared to playing acoustic kits so yeah you so because that's you know rub on a pigger so you know the the bounce on it mm-hmm. uh it's not the same you're gonna get on a on a okay yeah yeah, yeah. So you know yeah, that yeah. the, the natural beat to that, you know, you know, changes your 
your drum placement you're playing and all that stuff compared to as in electric drumming because you can play things you can actually come and replicate on your acoustic drum sometimes i'm like mm-hmm. what did i do that I'm like, mm-hmm. and like that was like so me you know like uh-huh. things that throw me off mm-hmm. I've, uh, i've only done i know i've only done one studio session with an with uh, an electric kit i don't know who told that guy uh-huh. but, <laughs> man electric kit i can see one behind you man even if you try to blow it man yani yeah, i think that's a fun so i'm really not gonna i'm, I'm really not gonna get into that so have fun have fun have fun with you no 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 choko blapa you me i understand gilia but hey everyone everyone has their preference it's not something that personally I'd, I'd even invest in uh mm-hmm. Um, maybe a drum machine so oh, that would do straight up because it adds mm-hmm. as a supplementary whatever for yeah. whatever specific show I'm playing you know, I'm not mm-hmm. always going to have a drum machine at all my gigs the only time I get to use that is when I'm playing for people whose music you really can't be able to replicate easily on mm-hmm. a full acoustic set so you have to bring that in to supplement and at least be able to cover and give that music but original sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but electric kit I don't think it's up for discussion. If you love it, cheers man. It's, but this for me for me it just it just doesn't do it. <laughs> Sorry. Nini <laughs> watu comment section na naona hapo vile. I'm not hiding it. My background is already blurred. <laughs> so, um let's go to the next one. Mm-hmm. Well, actually before we we continue there's a question I've seen that uh I do also want to to ask like some, someone was asking about the high hats so and what's what's the best position uh to place your high hat so um labda tuambie ni vile kila mtu ana feel unajua to seven pia na yakanga huko chini na smell zinashinda na gani itakuwa uh i normally i normally have my hat way way up almost mm-hmm. to the top of the clutch i think that sticks mm-hmm. out almost but i usually like leave like a very tiny space because what that allows mm-hmm. me to do is to to apply minimal pressure mhm when moving my feet down there and oh. when mm-hmm. the moment i want to lock it down as in imefika mwisho so pressure yote inatoka hapo juu inaifinya chini hakuna ile ina allow to bounce off or something of the sort mm-hmm. if if maybe you can you can just think about how that works in your head but me for me i usually keep it all the way up top and then i enjoy the how, how can i put it you see how you can have you have just enough space between your high hat and, and your snare and your snare head. because oh, you're, you're playing cross stick as well stick, yeah you know you're left-handed and everything but still one thing you need to factor is that sound bounces off crazily in mm-hmm. those small spaces and uh, considering that the hat is almost all the way on top of the of the snare the miking mm-hmm. might be a problem so there's going to be bleeds all over the place mm-hmm. yeah so uh, i just try I, i try as much as possible to look at how my setup looks like and what works for me and that's something that i've been doing since kitambo Mm-hmm. and it it has it has it has just worked for me i think it's it's like a comfort zone for me so it might work for you it might not work for you when mm-hmm. it's just a matter of nikiwa mm-hmm. sayo kidogo ju pressure na kaji hapa chini nikijaribu ku release you have to move mm-hmm. my feet all the way up or na chini to kidogo and i get what i want right. and then right. i tell people not to tighten those two bolts over there in the middle the ones that are holding the top mm-hmm. uh the top uh, the top uh uh i had mm-hmm. tighten the one ya chini kabisa so that it doesn't shuka but this one on top loosen it so that you know your heart are able to dance mm-hmm. and there's there's this capeg that's normally down here on the car. Uh, it's like a what do you call it it's like a plate where the high hat sits mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. loosen that thing if you don't know its purpose just leave it all the way down don't let it push your high hat to the side because that way if your high hat is supposed to sit like this mm-hmm. they'll end up sitting like this all right because now right. it has pushed this lower hat to a point now where 
ime inataka kutoka nje it's at an angle mm. and if you look at it from the down position this is how it's going to be so if you don't the purpose of that it's better just pull it all the way together like mm-hmm. if you don't chin let your hair stay like this but ensure that your top eye hat is flexible and it's dancing so that you know when you're releasing you don't have to it is so much just it is going to dance and it's going to make contact with the lower i had to give you that he knows that you're trying to look for easily mm-hmm. so yeah right. so i guess we must that it ah okay yeah um uh, so there's another question here which was for most artists original originality is first preceded by a phase of learning and often emulating others what was this like for you how would you describe your own development as a drummer and the transition towards your own sound this is by musimi bets uh of course msani anataka kitu anataka straight up uh, yeah but at some point you just have to give him a reality check okay mhm and sometimes they end up appreciating sometimes they're not going to take it very positively uh so uh up up out of the many artists that have worked with that uh, you know maybe it's like their first time trying to you know work in work with a band with the live band issue me kwatu ni hiyo adjustment hiyo adjustment ina kuunga issue that na the live band you know as a dj you know the dj me na perform na dj so mzi kiaga kwa exactly when you record kwa studio hakuna element to miss hakuna anything So if you find an artist who's able to give you guys freedom it's teamwork it's not even me on my own me I'll just come I'll just have my own way of tuning the kit and uh playing and you know making this the live version of this song come to life it's teamwork it it's got to be uh the MD anafanya kazi yake ama ni MD tu anaka hapo kama picha and it will MD you will let the band together z there's so much that goes into it man it's not just sitting around it's just a matter mm-hmm. of i'm gonna sit home i'll explore i'll come with stems unless whom send him the mr gig to me stems on my truck bring them present all these things because your band is there it's gonna buck you up i'll tell you hey you're trying to uh uh like remake uh this guy's sound to you need to the closest uh as close as possible to what it sounds as in his in his track to point if we play this you guys going to be like mm-hmm. ah there's that element there's that element and mm-hmm. there's going to be guidance all through you know transitions like make the guy be more interested in understanding it because you have to be nika patia tumsema ziwa even patia nyama mara ya kwanza ambia kunyo kunyo maziwa even the ikti na work we how much do you have enough time to prepare for this this is the much you can do now and if you're serious about doing this live stuff later on you can be able to build a set where you know personally you come to actually appreciate the fact that playing with a live band is much more better than playing with a dj in the track because yep. it gives you room for interaction mm-hmm. it gives you room to explore it gives you room to just you know do so many things that you, you can't be able to do just using a track because a track ikianza your track ni 2 minutes 30 seconds straight ikikatika ni hivyo song next dj track number 5 <laughs> hey for sure for sure yeah yeah man so uh for me for me when i was starting of course when you're starting something it's going to be hard utanyanyakea utakuwa mpole because you really don't know how to penetrate that sector una feel mm-hmm. and easy you don't know how to bring it out to tell the rest of the guys a eh, sasa sitfanyeni vitfanyeni sometimes it feels too much because sometimes i might be working with band members who are too comfortable man people don't want to show up properly I'm like hey we come up with a job unajua kuna utamu hapa hiki kitu kishaka together we all going to enjoy it so mm-hmm. let's put in the work as much as it sounds as if it's too much and you feel like it's going to be hard to remember I'm like mate i don't take such excuses I tell people both that's an excuse man just do your job you know mm-hmm. Uh, by the moment by the time i'm bringing it i'm in the same band but i'm not complaining we are learning the same thing right so, so if you're the only person who's complaining saying hey this is too much right now you know it, 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 and i'm feeling uncomfortable i usually just mention it man and mm-hmm. for a start when you're starting out it was a bit hard nowadays uh, as things are 
a bit different. We are able to talk, we are able to communicate, we are able to co-direct. People people are open to such stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and so it's just a matter of involving an entire team to bring something to life, and that way, it's gonna give you even more opportunity, more space to explore different sounds. So this is your sound niangu niangu. In fact, in the end, I'm I compile stuff, I mix uh-huh. them on my uh-huh. logic and stuff to get the actual sound of a uh-huh. truck so that uh-huh. I can be able to use a transfer it on a flash, go load it up on a machine, on a drum machine and everything. Uh-huh. To a point where, because I'm going to be able to use the machine, I'm going to be able to use the machine, I'm going to be able to use the machine, I'm going to be able to use the machine. But the moment I'm going to bring in a role, it will change the whole idea because you know the band is like the role is coming there's a cue mm-hmm. hey this is coming it's gonna sound fun and then you come back to the beat that's the joy of playing live music man nice. uh, music that is dynamically yeah. arranged and that everyone had an input in, and that everyone you know was like this is the one you know can you shift this like it everyone has to be in together so you came because you are but came didn't so kulala and then we be a bit. They tell them like, hey, uh, you're slacking a bit. So can we do this? Mm-hmm. Can do this? this song sounds boring. Ask around mm-hmm. people. They tell you. I normally tell everyone that I've worked with because mm-hmm. I've worked at so many of these. And I tell them, I'm like, hey, it's only boring. I'm just this slow. Can we do something about it? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think, I think the relationship that I've maintained with so many people just gives me favor. Ever such people don't take me as if it's too much or anything they always mm-hmm. so open to it and like okay so what, what could we implement so and many places or many people that i play with since i no longer do fd a lot of it mm-hmm. i just found myself being given that in you of uh, co-arranging music mm-hmm. co-md and all that stuff but uh, I, it doesn't take away i don't allow it to take away from the person right. who's you, you know mm-hmm. uh, supposed to do that yeah for sure all right um i'm seeing time is actually far much spent are you down for like one more question i can give you like like, uh, 15 more minutes ah thank you thank you very much thank you very much so um kuna mtu ameuliza um touch how can i work on my touch this is mr k sticks ted uh placement 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 and uh i don't know if come on you touch did you come on you to more than a trickle sound even exactly because you're not going to put mm-hmm. the same touch in every other beat that you play some songs need to be played lightly but once you get uh, the placement that you've always been looking for somewhere you feel comfortable on how you hit the snare mm-hmm. it's not loud but it's there to a point where kuna ile balance here there was sound that akuwa na issue ku mix because you're not consistent mhm eh kuna chapa sana na force side the next minute to me change so how consistent that's the problem so for you to be able to just work on that i believe it's something to just sit down me used to play along to a lot of songs which i still do until today my favorite music i just put it mm-hmm. in my ears and i sit down and I just lock on the groove, man. Mm-hmm. And you just jump through to it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, that's it. That's pretty much it. You pick another song that, you know, interests you, jump to it if it's a soft song. Like, that will, will really open your hands up and your approach to so many stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, that you can be able to be the touch. I think that Chiangu Mekua out of out of uh, playing along to a lot of music. All right. Not even at a gig, yeah, because it's a CV to end of the school, a gig, I'm so on being, I'm so on the list, because I'm not sure, because I'm not sure, and I don't understand, Z. That's, yeah, that's sure. Yeah, you know, where we're supposed to do it, invest in it, put money in it, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even let it take time, book a space, sit down. Play the song, understand it. When you come out of that space, you know, tell yourself, hey, I'm happy. I've learned something today and I feel a difference. Mm-hmm. Invest in yourself. That's the best gift you can ever give yourself. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Ted, I hope uh, your question has been answered. Me and Mependa, you answer, Sana. I'll go to Mr. JB. And Oliza, how do you 
fit in as a drummer when playing in a band? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand the question. Did you call me hello? But how do you feel? Uh, for drummers, drummers should should have so much pride because a band is as good as as their drummer. Mm -hmm. So whichever way you interpret that is really up to you. So if you know you are shaky and you are not certain about your playing, mm -hmm. well, put on issues, of course. And uh, if 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 you really not if you really not sure, you really need to be sure. Fitting mm -hmm. in is really not the thing, man. Don't try to fit in. Be different, mm -hmm. you know. Be different. Be different, man. In a way that mm -hmm. you know, everyone will come and they'll be like, "Hey, this is it," and then you're like, "Let me show you what's up." Yeah, we want to be a band is as good as drama, man. We hold so much power in that, not in a mm -hmm. bragging kind of way, mm -hmm. but if, if a drama is throwing down the whole band will be locked up because it's the drama and then it's the bass player nothing mm -hmm. comes before that every other thing comes after that so mm -hmm. we can do a gig with a bass player we just jam and get a singer and flow through it and we lock mm -hmm. a gig easily so i'll tell the drama at the end of the day boss we're in the group session boss kishkilia hiyo na business to akwa na feel come lo group na mwa lock ndani you're not rolling over his uh, grooves he's not doing runs over your groove drama drama and drama so work on you so work work on your craft knowing that hey you matter so much to a setting you're not just a plus to it not a mm -hmm. as good as as its drama so yeah pretty much that awesome mm -hmm. let's go to the next one mm -hmm. uh i'm going to Just a second. Um, ah, okay. Kuna wewe ameuliza Mr. Larry ameuliza during your own practice mm -hmm. is it advisable to use a metronome, a track or a song itself? Well, uh you can kill one one uh, you can kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. This is a song. <laughs> Yeah, because uh -huh. songs songs are pretty much recorded in metronome, so the beat will maintain all throughout, unless uh -huh. it's those complex uh, hippie songs, hip hop uh -huh. songs that be done by hip hop song in a slow down from 100 to like 40, and then it comes back up. I don't know to 150, so I don't know. But I'd recommend a track any day, every day. But uh -huh. if you want to learn how to play a role, a rudiment, a role, uh, well, sorry, I said a role. like uh walk on your speed and all that stuff yeah get a metronome metronomes are, are pretty important as well you know just mm -hmm. keep on increasing it uh arakisha your idea try move it all across the kit and see how it sounds and mm -hmm. yeah so all those work but be for me at the end of the day i'll i'll go for a track and there's a way you can be able to split uh Uh, a track from the voice and all that stuff which mm -hmm. maybe it's a story for another day or things maybe we'll, we'll talk about some other day if uh, yeah. god wills it mm -hmm. and yeah just play through them all right yeah all right um there's this guy who's asking uh let us grow graciously what's your take on having a drum sample pad to better your play that doesn't better you play in any way uh -huh. i mean there's not no uh, it's a sample but it is sample sounds but uh that you need to sample from uh trying to get a, a sound or just a, a sound from maybe a song that you're trying to play or perform live and the only uh -huh. sound the only way to get that sound is by using a drum machine uh -huh. So that's why drum pad on the funny rolls and everything to try and sound good. So I, I I mean that's just it's like an addition. It's like a, it's like another snare. Yeah. Maybe the different sound and everything. Yeah. So that's just a plus to a kit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it doesn't make you make your drumming any better. It's as good as how you play it and how you set it. Uh huh. Yeah. I I like that answer. It's so yeah. we, Gary the Reva. Gary the Reva that kind of the day. Any addition I think on, that, thing on an acoustic uh -huh. kit is just a plus. 
the kit is a kit as is how you play the design for the song so if you need something else you're gonna have to put on additional stuff and that's gonna determine how you play it how you set it that's it ah for sure yeah man. i think we'll yeah. take the last question yeah. which uh is by mbithin zao who's asking not a drum question but what <laughs> is your philosophy on mding since you are arguably one of the best mds in canairo <laughs> thank you so much Mbidi. Asante, asante mm -hmm. uh, please ask the question again sorry <laughs> so the question was what's your philosophy on mm -hmm. MDing mm -hmm. um, since you are arguably one of the best MDs in Kanairo so is there, is there really a philosophy mm -hmm. uh, 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 well I think I think what gives me an upper hand is the fact that I can play multiple instruments uh. like very well uh, uh, and being able to understand that that gives you an upper hand to be able to guide other guys on what you want them to play rather than mm -hmm. you you're trying to figure out what is that that you're holding and all that uh -huh. that gives you an upper hand because I know what a bass player is supposed to hold and if you hold something wrong and the keys guy is holding a different chord everything is just gonna sound thrown off and that for me is 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 really a matter of importance if you're not call it philosophy as you're calling it so it's mm -hmm. understand what the next person is playing mm -hmm. like being the moment let it not just be about you let it mm -hmm. be that it's it's teamwork makes whatever they they say something work the dream work <laughs> the dream work exactly that's yeah. what's up so everyone has to be there together to make something work if you come and you just want to play whatever it is that you want to play of course uh, people are going to clash as much as not many people are going to talk but what i what i tell people the other day is that the md has to take charge as a director okay that allows for it for people to have an easier time and to see save on time as well if you guide guys properly it's just leadership for the end of the day are you leading mm -hmm. by example or are you just leading to show off that hey i'm the leader and you're not mm -hmm. doing the leading thing properly mm -hmm. so take your time as a leader be a servant leader start with that and then if you're able to implement that across anything not just music generally you should be able to work out man and then be friends with the people that you're working with to my best day be open to see things from other people's perspective than yours so let other people matter where is the toy box as much as they be be like okay what an excuse i'm so wrong with me in a funny when i use code and everything and then just address that stuff so servant leadership mm -hmm. is is really on top of that list for me ah that's 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 amazing man hey me at up uh i'll tell you as much as i'm hosting i'm also learning mm -hmm. so uh i really really appreciate it man and uh now we are coming to the close of the of the lives and uh, for the rest of the people uh we'll definitely see as to how we can get to have brayo again and have more sessions man because clearly there's so much to talk about so much but we'll thank you thank clinic. you so much man yeah thank man. you so much for showing up clinic, man. i'm really happy to <laughs> to just you know be able to pour out i wish you could have more time and mm -hmm. continue to share throughout the night but hey um this is just a blessing to be able to just pour out to others what i know and uh thanks for the platform as well shout out to icons you guys are doing a great job by them man everything you're doing mm -hmm. keep it keep building your sound keep working mm -hmm. on your niche do not be swayed god is not the author of confusion confusion will come mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. just depending on your foundation you guys keep mm -hmm. it okay keep doing what mm -hmm. you're doing shout out to nikara shout out to joe mm -hmm. shout out to shakan shout out to steve shout mm -hmm. out to you you guys are doing amazing stuff i've worked with all of you i've met you guys personally and i think mm -hmm. you guys are pretty great musicians and we haven't thought of doing something like this eh, to create a platform for guys so kudos to you guys as in take your flowers keep taking it all the way high spread it all across you know there's not just be for drummers 
spread it across in every other way. Anyone who's willing to give back, it's better to give than to receive. So take it, take it, man. Yeah. Share with the world. So cheers, bro, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you so much, man. I love that. That's that's a that's a really good takeout. It's better and it's blessed to give than to receive. So yeah, sure. we really appreciate you, man. Thank you for just uh, pouring out man and you're willing to even pour out even more yeah. so for for the rest of the guys who are wondering so but we'll definitely link up and uh, do something else we'll we'll definitely plan a master class and let you guys know on our socials kindly follow brio kwa social media handle zake brio pena social media handle hapa me mother <laughs> I'm not big. Yes. I'm not big on social media. I, I just mm -hmm. joined TikTok like the other day, mm -hmm. uh, but you'll see Randa Live, mm -hmm. uh, Randa Live all all, uh, all all across. Sorry, uh, my Instagram is Brian Randa. The A on the Brian is a V, mm -hmm. so B V N Randa. Mm -hmm. That that that's pretty much it. This is where I, I'm able to at least every once in a while. Um, mm -hmm uh share you know what i'm doing in the music scene so so thank you so much guys i i hope i'll keep up to the pressure and hey i'm just blessed yeah, to be here exactly you, man. <laughs> thanks, man. appreciate it thanks bro appreciate it ah, so, so. thanks guys manze let's close it up apple have a good night yeah cheers man all right good night, Peace. Ah, good night. <laughs>